The story opens with a comic prologue, which narrates that in 1983, Earth was subjected to cosmic rays that gave sociopath superpowers, resulting in a rise of supervillains, known as miscreants. With no one able to stop the miscreants, normal people are usually left living in fear of them. On one random night, a metro bus is attacked by some miscreants, resulting in the death of Emily's parents, who is now left alone with her grandmother. Emily is a smart and studious kid, whose parents were geneticists, and she also intends to pursue a career in the same field. After her parents were killed in the crossfire, she becomes determined to find a way to stop miscreants. By 1985, Emily has sacrificed much of her social life in favor of researching ways to fight back against miscreants. While this results in her being bullied, Lydia stands up for her and becomes her best and only friend after saving her from the bullies. They spend some time in the park, where Lydia reveals her wish to be a super person like a hero, to beat the crap out of villains like miscreants. After listening to her wish, Emily claims that her parents were also trying to turn normal humans into superhumans, using their field of geneticist, and that one day, she will fulfill their wish and find a way to do so. Five years later, Emily and Lydia are still together, and mostly spend time at each other's home. Lydia supports Emily's dream of giving superpowers to normal people, though she tries to make sure that Emily does not overwork herself. On one such day, Emily is studying for an upcoming AP exams, when Lydia also shows up at her house. Lydia asks her to take a half-hour nap from studying, to which Emily agrees eventually. However, Emily accidentally oversleeps and wakes up late for the exam, which angers her. She blames Lydia for this, which strains their relationship, causing them to drift apart. In 2024, Emily and Lydia have gone their separate ways, with Emily becoming a successful scientist and researcher for her own company and Lydia becoming a longshoreman. She is cute and healthy, and always finds reasons to enjoy her life. One day, Lydia is returning from work, when she witnesses some police vehicles chasing one of the miscreants, known as, Laser, who can generate and control whip-like energy beams. She is currently the most dangerous threat to the citizens, and has been considered a super bad villain. People are afraid to leave their houses, which results in bars and restaurants being left empty. Later, Lydia tries to reconnect with Emily through a text message, when their high school reunion comes around. She receives a reply from Emily, mentioning that she will try her best to join her. On the night of reunion, Lydia watches a news report, which says that a popular mayoral candidate, famously known as the King, was attacked by Laser during his campaign speech. In response to the attack, King receives citizen support, and challenges Laser that she cannot take him out. In the meantime, when Emily fails to show up on the night of the reunion, Lydia concludes that Emily is still uncomfortable attending parties by herself, and goes to pick her up. She goes through all protocols, and is amazed by Emily's high-tech office. Emily finally shows up, and they both admire each other's appearance. Emily tells her that while she would have liked to go to the reunion, she had forgotten when the reunion was, and had a project she had to work on that night, which Emily wants to show to Lydia. Lydia mistakenly spills the drink on Emily, which frightens her about Lydia's non-serious behavior, so she warns her not to touch anything while she is away. However, proving she's not great at following directions, Lydia disregards Emily's warnings and touches her equipment in the injection room. Unfortunately, she accidentally injects herself with a superpower formula Emily's been working on. The staff rushes after knowing the breach, and Lydia passes out due to the formula. When she wakes up, she finds Emily still standing in front of her, completely enraged about how Lydia destroyed her five years' hard work in just a minute. Having been injected with the serum, Lydia learns from Emily that the serum was designed to give a normal person superhuman strength, and that she would have to undergo special training and treatment so the serum does not kill her. Emily's personal assistant, Allie, advises to start superpower treatment for Lydia. She disagrees for the treatment at first, but when Emily informs her, that her body will most likely explode in a week, she eventually agrees. They take her to a room, where we are introduced to Emily's teenage daughter, Tracy, who is also a tech enthusiast, and very smart. They give Lydia some extra clothes, and inform her that the treatment will begin at 5 a.m. Lydia is surely not happy to wake up at 5 a.m., but has no other choice. Before initiating training, Emily informs her, 
that her ATP will most likely increase by 10,000%, giving her superpowers to lift a bus. For the treatment, they once more inject her with a serum, which burns her face like fire. However, her pain vanishes in two seconds, which calms her down. During the treatment, Lydia also faces some side effects of the serums, including long nails, bunny-like teeth, etc. Emily also joins Lydia in the treatment, although a less painful one, since Emily took the serum in a pill form to earn the other superpower concocted, invisibility. In the meantime, Laser continues her lethal activities across the city, further frightening the citizens. Lydia's training continues up until day 9, and she is now able to throw heavy metals to a long way, while Emily also takes her invisibility pills. During a break time, Lydia asks her about Tracy's dad, to which she claims that he was one of the researchers, who could not handle the responsibility and left them. Emily finally takes her last treatment pill, which turns her invisible immediately, and she teases Lydia with her power. Lydia, on the other hand, reaches her training day 29, and gains ultimate superpowers. She is sometimes unable to control her emotions, and breaks everything around her. The training finally ends, and they dress up in their new suits, which gives them a superhero look. Lydia also suggests some names for their super team, which finally gives them the name, Thunder Force, as the title of the movie. For their first mission, Allie and Tracy give them a purple Lamborghini, which they somehow find difficult to settle in, due to their healthy appearance. Their first mission is to foil a liquor store robbery, run by a miscreant with crab arms, known as the Crab. They arrive at the store while the robbery is in progress, and Emily turns herself invisible. When Lydia intervenes, the robbers fire at her, but she dodges. She then fights the robbers, but mistakenly sends herself up in the sky with full force. She falls back and retaliates once more. When Lydia and the crab face each other, he falls in love with an equally smitten Lydia, much to Emily's concern. They were successful in stopping the heist, and Mr. Crab is forced to leave with his thugs. Emily and Lydia, now known as the superhero Team Thunder Force, are praised for their heroics in the news, and all over the city. This brings Thunder Force to the attention of the king, whose campaign is built on the idea that only he can end the miscreant's crimes. However, it is revealed that the king is also a miscreant, and is using Laser and the Crab as his team, to gain sympathy against his competition in the election. Laser is desperate to kill Thunder Force because she likes killing, but King suggests to have a talk with them, before moving forward to kill them. With the help of Laser, King forcibly enters Emily's office, and threatens them to work for him, leaving Chicago at the mercy of the miscreants unless he wins the mayoral election. Lydia disagrees with confidence, but King still threatens her before leaving. They visit Emily's grandmother, and request her to shift to somewhere safer, as they are concerned about her safety. However, her grandmother rejects, and encourages them to fight against the miscreants and win, which builds their confidence. Thunder Force continues to fight crime with their superpowers, and support the rival mayoral candidate, thereby causing King to lose the election. He gets enraged, and decides to attack Thunder Force. The King sends Laser to attack them at a diner. Emily becomes invisible for the moment and stays hidden, but Lydia fights back, and somehow manages to beat her down. When Laser tries to get away, Lydia leaves the diner, and decides to throw a bus at her. She slowly picks up the bus and throws towards Laser, despite Emily's protests. Though nobody is hurt, Emily decides that Lydia's impulsiveness is too dangerous, again straining their friendship. In an effort to make amends, Lydia goes on a date with the crab to get some useful information. From him, Lydia learns that the king is planning on blowing up everyone, who did not vote for him in the election, along with the new mayor, at a party he's hosting under the guise of celebrating the new mayor. She visits Emily and tells her of what she learned from the crab. Although Emily finds it weird to have a date with a crabman, but she admires her efforts and they reconcile. They begin with their plan to visit the king's bombing location, and wait for the perfect moment. However, Tracy secretly learns that Allie is double-crossing them, and is helping Laser in attacking Thunder Force. She sneaks in from behind, and beats her unconscious. She informs Thunder Force about the danger just in time, saving them from big danger. They face Laser once more, and Lydia manages to beat her for the moment. Tracy also decides to help them in the mission, despite Emily's resistance. After fighting off Laser, 
Thunder Force go to stop King from bombing the building. King is trying to leave the building with his thugs, including Mr. Crab. However, Laser wakes up in the meantime, and informs King about Thunder Force. She claims that they are trying to defuse the bomb, forcing King to follow them in the building. When Thunder Force find the bomb, King confronts them on the same floor, stopping them from disarming the bomb. When his thugs are unable to shoot the girls, King decides to fight Thunder Force himself using his superhuman strengths, significantly stronger than Lydia. While Lydia and King are busy in fight, Emily uses a taser to beat other thugs. Unfortunately, Laser also shows up, and uses her beams to make Emily visible. She beats her down with full force, but before she could kill her, Tracy joins the fight from nowhere, and saves her mother. She injected herself with her mother's serum, giving her the ability to run at superhuman speed. Before King can kill Lydia, the crab double-crosses him and saves her, but gets his claws broken off. Lydia finally uses this opportunity, and throws the king miles away with her full power. Though they manage to defeat the king, Thunder Force realizes that the bomb will go off before they can disarm it. Tracy decides to carry the bomb to somewhere safe with her superhuman speed, but they have no guarantee that the bomb would be stable enough to not go off. Lydia decides to sacrifice herself, knowing that she can at least reduce the impact of the explosion. They have a brief emotional moment, in which Lydia thanks Emily for being her best friend. Lydia says a final goodbye in a burst of emotions, and jumps out of the building with the bomb. She dives into the Chicago River and the bomb explodes, seemingly killing her in the explosion. Emily and Tracy witness the incident and cry. However, the paramedics manage to find her body and resuscitate her. As Emily and Tracy begin to mourn, they are surprised to hear a burp come from her, followed by Lydia violently throwing up river water. It's unclear if it's the super suit or her powers that saved her, but when Lydia shows love for her suit, it is implied that it was the suit. Emily, Tracy, and Lydia have a sweet moment together before they are approached by the new mayor. She proposes that they make an official arrangement with the city in order to work as professional protectors, which means Thunder Force is officially in business. The scene ends with the crowd chanting their name, as Lydia and Emily embarrassingly try to dance the floss. After that, the film has a small scene between Lydia and the crab. They both really bond over their shared love of eating raw chicken, and the final scene of the film shows the couple feeding each other raw chicken cutlets. However, as a matter of fact and according to the new mayor, the king is in custody but still alive, and Laser ran away before they could arrive, which somehow implies a sequel for the movie, despite a satisfying ending for Thunder Force.